Now that you know how hearing works, let's look at the other sense that comes from your ear, which is equilibrium, or your sense of balance. And remember, there are two types of equilibrium. You have static and rotational. So we'll look at static equilibrium first. This occurs in the vestibule. Inside the vestibule, you have this membrane called the otolithic membrane. Think of it kind of like a jello jiggler. It's about that consistency. All the little dots you see inside there are otoliths. Now, if you translate this, oto refers to ear and lith means stone. So this literally means ear stones. So these are tiny little stones made of calcium. The reason you want little stones in your ear is that they have weight, so they respond to gravity. Stones are heavy, so they respond to gravity. Then you have embedded within this cilia. You have all these little short ones here are stereocilia. And then there's one tall one at the end. You can see this one tall one is the kinocilium. And these are attached to the cells that are attached to your nerves. So this is that cranial nerve eight, the vestibulocochlear nerve. So these cells constantly send signals to your brain. So this is a tonic. If you remember at the beginning of the chapter, you learned about tonic and phasic. So this is tonic. It constantly signals the brain. So you always know where gravity is. But it changes its rate. So you can see here, if you tilt your head back or you're lying on your back, such that gravity is behind you. Or you accelerate. You're in your car and you hit the, gra the gas so that you're accelerating and moving forward. Think about you're sitting at a stoplight and you hit the gas, it kind of pushes you back in your seat a little bit. So gravity behind you or you're accelerating forward, that causes the stereocilia to bend toward the kinocilium. And the reason they bend this way is because of that otolithic membrane. The otolithic membrane responds to the gravity, it has those otoliths that make it heavy, and it slides back. So that membrane slides back and it bends those cilia. So these lines at the bottom here show the rate of signaling. And you can see the lines are close together. So when gravity is behind you or you're accelerating, when those cilia bend toward the kinocilium, you get faster signals to the brain. And your brain interprets fast signals as knowing gravity is behind you. If you lean forward, so if you lie on your stomach or you decelerate, so that gravity is in front of you 
or you're in your car and you hit the brakes. Think about when you hit the brakes, it makes you lunge forward a little bit. This causes that otolithic membrane to slide forward. And when it does, it makes the stereocilia bend away from the kinocilium. And that slows the rate. So when your brain gets slow signals, it knows that gravity is in front of you or you are slowing down, you're decelerating. So that's how static equilibrium works. Now let's look at rotational equilibrium. So this one occurs in your semicircular canals. And this is how you sense rotational movement. So this is how you sense when you turn or you spin. So in your semicircular canals, you have fluid, and this fluid has inertia. Okay, so think about Newton's laws. You've probably learned these before in high school and grade school. Newton's laws of motion, one of them talks about inertia. I'm sure you're familiar with this. What does a body at rest tend to do? It stays at rest. And a body in motion stays in motion. So your semicircular canals are filled with this fluid that has its own inertia. This means that the fluid in your semicircular canals has its own inertia that is somewhat independent of your body. Then, embedded in that fluid, you have a cupula. This again is like the otolithic membrane. It's like a jello jiggler. So this is a gel membrane. Then you have your cilia. And attached to that is your cranial nerve number eight, vestibulocochlear nerve. So when you are still, so the first picture here, you are still, you're not rotating. The fluid and your body are both at rest. And so the cupula is not bent. And if it's not bent, the cilia are not bent. Okay. Then when you turn your head, so the body turns, the cupula is attached to your body, so it turns with you. But the fluid, which is called endolymph, remember, has inertia. It does not turn with you. It was at rest. It stays at rest. So 
So the cupola along with the body is turning, but the fluid, the endolymph, stays at rest. Think of being in a round swimming pool with a pool noodle. So the pool noodle represents the cupola. And the endolymph represents the pool water. If you hold this noodle out, so here you are, you're in the swimming pool and you have a noodle. If you hold it out to the side and you start walking laps around the swimming pool, that noodle is going to bend backwards because you are moving, but the water is not. So that's what happens here. When you turn your head, the cupula turns with you, the endolymph has inertia, it stays still, so the cupula bends as it is drug through the stationary fluid. And then when that happens, it signals the brain. So you sense yourself turning because the fluid stays, but your body spins and that cupula spins with you and gets drugged through the stationary fluid. Now, this also is what causes dizziness. So we'll go over this more in class, but what basically happens is if you keep spinning, eventually the endolymph will spin with you. But then you stop spinning, but because the endolymph has inertia, it keeps spinning. And then because it keeps spinning, and now your cupula is still, but the endolymph is spinning, it bends your cupula. And so you feel like you're still spinning, even though you're not. That's what dizziness is.